Hey everybody, um, I want to do another tabletop build. This one's going to be an X9 DRL-IF dual socket 2011 ATX board. Um, you're going to be using Arctic I-11s, 64 gig of DDR3 ECC registered, uh, dual Xeons, I'll go over that in a second. These are just, just the fans. Um, X9 DRL is the successor to the X8 DRL series. Um, this one has IPMI, dual NIC, uh, quad USB 2.0, onboard VGA of course, uh, 8 SATA 2, 2 SATA 3 for SSDs, um, a whack ton of fan headers, and there's some back here too, uh, quad channel memory per processor, so 8, eight DIMMs total. Um, we're going to be using Arctic I-11s, 64 gig, uh, dual E5 2660V2s, and get the fans for the Arctic I-11s, and GLID GC Extreme. So this board already has a set of just kind of throwaway processors in it. It's dual E5 2620. They're okay, uh, especially if you're just starting out with socket 2011. If you buy a combo like this and it comes with 2620s, just leave them in and see how, you know, see how they perform for you and your workload. And if you don't like them, you can upgrade. But ultimately, they're not very expensive. I think they're, uh, if I recall correctly, they should be like $30 a pair, or maybe $40 a pair. But they're not very expensive at all. Um, so, yeah, just take them for what you will. This is a pretty neat board. Um, I like that it has quad x8 physical slots and the first one has a cutout so you can do a full size like graphics card or something if you want um, and it does have an x1 and one regular PCI um, so yeah my cat is making noises at me um, so let's get started I'm gonna remove these processors first and then uh, swap those out then do the RAM and then do the coolers last so with 2011, you have uh, two retention arms, and they have to be done in order. So with all dual socket boards, they're going to be flipped. So this one, you rotate 180 degrees, and there's one here. Okay. Um, so the one with the U shape, push this down and pull it away from the socket and it'll spring up on its own. And it, it'll, it'll only go about this far. And then do the same thing with the short, sort of like a V-shaped arm. And that one will go, come out all the way. What you do is you just lift the lid. This arm's gonna be kind of in the way. Um, just something to keep in mind. What I do is I take the, there's a little a uh, slanted piece on each side of the socket. It's kind of handy for just grabbing the sides of the processor like so and lifting out. I'm just going to take a quick look and see if there's any pins or anything that's damaged. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to take our new E5 2660V2s. So there's two ways you can do this. There's a uh, 45 degree cutout right in this corner here, which would line up with the gold triangle on the processor. Or you can line up the notches here and here, and they're spaced a little differently. So these, the notches on the left side here are closer to the side of the processor than the ones on the right. It might be a little bit harder to do on 2011 um, you might have to use the triangle method, but we're going to just do the exact opposite as to what we did before. Just gently let it sit there under its own weight. We're going to close the lid. Make sure it's just kind of uh, square here. Close this retention bracket. 
and then the second one. That's it. I'm going to flip this guy around. So it looks exactly the same as it did before because it's reversed. I'll put this one away. These are nice cases. Socket like looks pretty good. Twenty six sixty V twos. They are uh, two point two base. I'm not sure what the turbo is, but they are ten core, twenty thread. So this guy's gonna have twenty cores, forty threads. Uh, make a really really sweet server. Um, the 2660V2 only runs about 125 each or 250 for the pair. You could get a better price if you do a best offer or something like that, but um, you know, at, at most you'll be spending about 250 for the pair. They're freaking awesome processors. I think they give about almost 20,000 pass mark. So these are awesome. Um, we're going to do the RAM next because if we put the coolers in first, the coolers go over the RAM a little bit. Um, so what I have here is 8 gig sticks of Samsung DDR3 1066. 1066 it just happened to be the best deal. I prefer 1333, but um, ultimately I don't think you'll see much of a performance difference. I wouldn't go lower than 1066 though. Um, but this was just a fantastic deal at the time, and I think the capacity is worth it, so we don't have to upgrade later. So we're going to open all the tabs for our memory. It really doesn't matter which side you start on. Um, you just want to look for the short side, and this is the, uh, the key. So there's a short side and a long side. And on, the, on this side, the short side is on the top, and that's the same for both of these. And then it reverses on the right side here. Just gonna line up the tabs. And we're going to push in the short side first, and then the long side. If you've been around my Discord, or uh, my subreddit, or the Reddit build post, You'll know that I advocate for building outside of the case and testing outside of the case. Um, I'll probably do another video on on sort of in-depth as to why, but it's so much easier. Oh, see, I already put it in backwards. It's so much easier to see what you're doing, to actually do what you need to do, and to identify mistakes when you're building and everything's right in front of you as opposed to putting the motherboard in the case trying to put the processors in with the case all around you and things like that and if it doesn't work you're gonna have to end up taking it out of the case anyway to test it so you might as well just test everything and build everything here um, so that's why I like to do these tabs are closed and like I said this guy has a lot of fan headers there's one two three four five six at the front and there's one two at the back so eight total that's freaking awesome way overkill though um, like I said before there's two SATA 3 ports and they're the white ones so that's what you use for your boot SSD or accessory SSD and the rest of these you can use for hard drives. Um, that's really cool. And let's see, anything else of note here? Got two USB 2.0 headers, 
single onboard USB port, even though there's connectors for another. I really don't know why they haven't soldered another physical port on, but uh, yeah. So I think it's time to mount the coolers. We got Gila GC Extreme, my favorite thermal paste. This is the best non-conductive, non-super expensive thermal paste, and it comes in a gigantic tube, so you get a lot of applications out of this. Um, this is the best stuff on the market, in my opinion. Um, there's a lot of graphs and stuff to back that up. But uh, anyway, we're going to use a generous amount here. 2011 is a big, big die. Sorry if I got a little bit of glare. I don't know if that made it any better. 2011 is a big die. Um, there's a lot of area to cover here, especially with 10 cores. Make sure that it spreads out nice and evenly. I'll do the same on the one in the back here. And I mean, a tube like this will last me a month, month and a half. Uh, I don't know how far the plunger goes down because it's covered by the sticker, but there's quite a lot in here, even doing 2011 builds like this. Um, so we got our I-11s, we're gonna use the larger thread screws for 2011 and the outside holes of the, uh, the mounting here. So we'll just drop this guy down. And make sure that um, the edges where the fan attaches are on the right side. I wonder if this will actually fit this way. No. So we couldn't mount them both sideways because this is an ATX socket. Um, they're just too close to each other. So we would actually have to either mount them this way or mount them in reverse and have the airflow going the other way. But I think for the for 99% of the setups, we're going to mount them air flowing from here to the back. Just going to lightly thread each one in. Not tighten them down, just get them started in the uh, Just get them started so that they don't move around. Do our second one. A couple of people have asked me about uh, concerns with the i11 and sort of the way it, like I, the base plate of the i11 is not very large. The actual contact patch is, is relatively small, especially for 2011. Um, but Arctic, they, they have high confidence that these, uh, these coolers will dissipate enough heat for the socket, despite its relatively small contact patch. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, it looks like it's, I mean, you can see a lot of bare processor underneath there. But I've used these things quite extensively. I have even checked individual core temps, uh, especially on, 10 and 12, uh, 10 and 12 core variants. I haven't seen any issues with them. So uh, whatever they got going on is pretty amazing. 
especially for the price that you're paying for these, sometimes as low as $22, typically around 25 to 30. But uh, they're really, really awesome. And so long as you're using uh, a good thermal paste, you can use the thermal paste they come with. I prefer the GC Extreme. I think it's just, I mean, it's worth it uh, for an extra 10 bucks or however much it is. And now is a good time. Anyway, so now is a good time to uh, check our alignment and make sure that these are lined up straight before we start tightening them down. I start with the hardest one to reach first. Tighten the screw a little bit and do a cross pattern. These screws are only partially threaded, so um, you can't really over tighten them unless you're really, really trying to, and then you might break a screw. But when the screw stops turning, just don't tighten it anymore. Um, so it's it's really not they're really not hard. I highly doubt that you will break a screw even if you're really cranking on this. Um, but that's why we use hand tools and never use any power tools because we don't know <laughs> we don't know what the torque spec is like on these um, all right so that guy's all tightened down we'll do the next one we'll start with the back the closest one the hardest one to reach just a couple turns each time on each one Again, the goal of doing a cross pattern is to try to apply even pressure as you're mounting it, get a better contact and flatter contact patch. Ultimately, I don't know how much it matters, but there's really no reason not to do it. This fan. See if we can get the middle fan in. Should be interesting. Oh, just barely. That's awesome. So we want our Arctic logo to be on the bottom. So I'm going to line up and try to make a, a flat, even plane with this here. Clip on the right side first, and just clip the left side over. And would you look at that? You have a nice uh, four millimeter, three millimeter gap right here. That's just awesome looking. That looks like it was designed to be that way. All right, so plug our fans in. Really, you can use any slot, there's no dedicated CPU fan one or CPU fan two slot. I'm just gonna use the ones that are most convenient here. Just kind of tuck the wire underneath the cooler. And I'll tuck this one in the back here. Maybe.
Alrighty. So that's it. That's the uh, tabletop build for the X9 DRL and dual E5 2660V2 with 64 gig of RAM. Um, hopefully I'll do a couple of videos on this in the future, some power consumption, pass mark scores, things like that. Um, I'll probably do the whole build overview before I ship it out to the to the guy that bought it. Um, so yeah, look for those in the future and we'll see you guys next time.